Hey guys, welcome back to Tap and Sack. Today on Spellslingers, we're going to be unlocking Gideon, the mono white commander who can come onto the battlefield and lead his army and deal damage directly to the opponent. He is invulnerable, so is he as strong as he looks? Let's find out. Here we are at the Spellslingers page, so let's go ahead and unlock Gideon. Or skip breakfast. Ready for so Gideon is one of the most popular planeswalkers in Magic the Gathering. He's part of the original members of the Gatewatch, uh, a group of five different colored planeswalkers that uh, protect the multiverse, I guess. And Gideon actually sacrificed himself in the fight against Nicol Bolas, who's another planeswalker, and that was in the War of the Spark uh, expansion in Magic the Gathering. So he's no longer in the story, but who knows, maybe he might come back in the future. Okay, so Gideon is a mono white spell slinger. He starts with 27 health, one of the higher ones, and his deck can only have white cards, but you're allowed to splash a secondary color of up to six cards. So similar to Chandra. And his gameplay strategy is basically to just be aggressive, casting lots of small creatures, because whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you will summon Gideon onto the battlefield as a 4-4 invulnerable creature. Now let's take a look at his signature cards and see how well they help his game plan. The first signature card is Gideon's Veteran, a 3 mana for 3-2, so not that great, but it comes with armor. So armor basically means it can absorb any amount of damage from one time and then it'll be gone. So imagine you have the veteran on the board, you can attack once, and if they have a blocker, armor will absorb it, and he'll still be alive and can attack the next turn again. So this will be good for Gideon because you want as many attackers to survive so that you can keep swinging in each turn. All right, the second signature card is very good and very important for Gideon. It's Arden Supporter. He's even got a picture of Gideon in his hands. So it's a one mana, one one soldier. When he enters the battlefield, you add a random white creature that costs two or less to your hand. So being 1 mana is great because you can cast it on your first turn. 1-1 uh, one, one is pretty weak, but getting a replacement white creature that costs 2 or less into your hand. So even if this dies, you can recast or cast that other card that you've just picked out. And the last signature spell is Gideon's Protection. It's a 1 mana spell. So this one gives a friendly creature armor, which we've already talked about. And then gives Gideon himself plus 1 plus 1 for the rest of the game. Okay, so now that we've gone through his basic abilities and his signature cards, let's go build his first deck. Choosing the splash color might be tricky. I think you have to see what cards you think would go well with, with Gideon. I think generally red and green has cheap creatures that you can um, cast alongside the white creatures so that you can get Gideon on the board as soon as possible. Blue and black tends to be slower, although there are some cheap zombies as well. So maybe for now, we'll just uh, try red and see how it goes. All right, I've added all six copies of the signature cards because I think we're definitely going to be using them. The other good land to consider is Training Yard. It's a rare land, so quite easy to get. So starting turn five, you have a chance to get a random white creature that costs two or less to your hand and give it plus one, plus one. So this is good because uh, you're getting more creatures onto the board and you know to help trigger Gideon's activation. So Rather than getting a mana gem, which you may not need anymore, you're getting an extra creature and it gets buffed with plus one plus one as well. Lillian War Leader is a pretty good card and it looks like it fits very well into Gideon because for 3 mana 4 tree, good stats, and when it attacks, you add a random white creature that costs 2 or less to your hand. So even if this dies, you're adding an extra creature into your hand that you can cast out again. And hopefully at being 4 tree, it's not going to be easy to deal with. For the white cards, let's focus on some of the very cheap creatures. So the 1 mana, 1 1. Lingering Spirit is great because it's flying, so even if they have a land blocker, you can just swing in for 1 damage and it will count as an attacker for Gideon. Elite Vanguard, 1 mana, 3 1. It's kind of weak with the 1 toughness, can easily be killed off, and sometimes the opponent will be trading with a smaller creature. But if you can give this armor, it will be very good and it will uh, also provide some early offensive power if they don't have any blockers. Shields Up is just a great trap because for 1 mana, it will give any creature armor so it can survive by taking any kind, of, any kind of damage. So we're putting two copies of this in. Another one mana cost creature, untested rookie for a 2-2 is decent. If it can survive, you'll get a plus two plus two buff. So 
best if you can give this armor somehow then it will take up the damage and then still survive and get plus two plus two even tour guide is a card you can consider because it can give another creature flying while itself has flying as well it will be very expensive for Gideon because for four mana you're probably not going to be able to cast it so soon but i think having that flying ability can be very important in the late game and it could even actually help you win at the very last minute all right so this is our Gideon deck it's built on commons and mostly rares and commons there are no epics i believe and only one mythic which is the yawning portal which we already have so we're just going to rely on very basic and simple game strategy we could try to be fast and just let Gideon do the heavy uh, groundwork so let's go play some games and see how well he does Ooh, how against a Johnny. Johnny is going to be a tough one, but we've got a decent starting hand of four one-drop creatures and the veteran. So let's try to keep this. Alright, I've got the Oath of the Paladin. Okay. No creature on their turn one, so we'll cast the uh, rookie. Stand let's pass the turn. We drew a second veteran, which uh, not so good. I think we just needed one. Ah, the healer, right? Okay, so we've got some options. I think we want to cast as many things as possible, so let's go with the Pouncing Lemur and the Elite Vanguard and the Faithful Caracal. Okay, there's the Steed. Oh nice, Gideon's protection. So we can give a friendly creature armor and Gideon plus one plus one for the rest of the game. So question is do we want to cast that now? Because then we won't be able to cast the veteran. So probably not. Let's just attack and see what happens. Okay, we had to sacrifice kind of like two creatures, unfortunately. So let's just cast just a veteran like and pass a turn. Ooh, the stack. Yeah, that's good. Alright, let's just give armor to these two. And then let's attack. Okay, no blocks, that's good. So we're gonna cast the veteran and pass the turn. So nice, we got three creatures with armor. So armor, never really experimented with before, but it can be really annoying to deal with when you're on the receiving end. Um, it doesn't nullify destroy effects though. So for stuff like flagrant foul, uh, armor is not gonna protect you. Now they got a stoneforge mystic, which is uh, very big. Okay. Probably stun the Stoneforge. And then just attack with three creatures. We fight as one. Take this. Just like we practice. Okay, they're down to 10, but the question is, can we actually survive long enough? Alright, let's pass the turn. I think for any adjustments to the deck, we definitely need to find more ways to stun the enemy or give creatures armor so that uh, we can have more creatures alive on the board because Gideon's creatures are so small and so weak that they just die to any blockers. Grudge match, nice. Okay. 
Aha, shields up would be nice. So there's really nothing else we can do except just um, attack. Because Gideon is all about just attacking. So the good thing is that Gideon, he cannot be killed. So in a way, it's like Gideon Ivar of Drizzt. You just even killing him or stopping him it doesn't make much sense. So all right, they fought with um, the veteran. Now they got to block someone. Okay, so they're down to two. And let's hope we can draw something good next turn. And or they don't kill off one of our creatures. Oh, another stack. <sighs> Why? Why do they have two stacks? Okay, so we need a hasty creature now, otherwise we're gone. Or we need the even tour guide to give something flying. Yeah, I'm gonna block. Let's just take that six and just hope for the best. Okay, so when we cast this, we get another white creature, so that would be good. And untested rookie, okay. Stand back, everyone. All right, let's pass the turn. So let's do that. I got this. So even if we attack and they block, at least we can kill off the stacks. So I don't want the stack to have like a free block. Ouch, R of courage, okay. All right, that's a nice buff. Okay, the warning portal is good for us. We get purr, it is just like the worst. Okay, let's just attack as usual, our very basic strategy. So we have to block Gideon at least. They're down to one, but we have no way of uh, killing them unless we draw a um, shock. Do we have a shock? I think we do have shock. Ooh, Stoneforge mistake. Okay. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. 18 damage, 19 damage. Probably should take this at least one time and see how it goes. So please give me a shock. Please. Oh no, we got Yawning Portal. What is this? Aha! When it takes damage, deal one damage to your opponent. Oh, but he got flying, so yeah, I've lost. Oh well, it was a good game. So we were very close with Gideon, we almost won just by being super aggressive. But unfortunately, Johnny just uh, came out on top with enough big blockers. So let's go to the next game. I'm rooting for you Up against Drizzt, the latest meta spell slinger. Oh, and our starting hand is a little bit on the weak side. Um, let's get rid of Revoke. Because Glorious Anthem could be nice to buff lots of creatures. Well then, let what events take their course. Okay, they have no class card, which is good. And they're just gonna cast the Elite Vanguard, pass it through. They probably have some creature for two mana. Okay, for the Dreamer. Luckily, it can't. I don't think they would trade for this, so we'll just attack. Advance. And let's cast Untested Rookie and then the Faithful Steed. You won't stand alone. And let's give it to uh, the Rookie. Oh, Harold. Nice. 
have said 3-2, but they decided not to attack. I feel I should just go for the Glorious Anthem now, although by casting the Caracal and the Spirit, I might have a better a value in a way. Because 4-2, I think they would trade with the Herald for the Vanguard, and that means I'll be short of one creature. So I'm just going to play my cards out and just pass a turn. Matron Malice. Alright, no attacks. Alright, I think it's time for Glorious Anthem. This would be a good buff. And let's just attack with Gideon. We'll probably lose some creatures, but uh, it's okay. Oh, Giant Grove. Nice. Alright, down to 9, but we're short of one creature. Stoneforge Mystic, good card. So I probably have to Divine Smite some creature. Question is which one? Alright, so let's kill Purr off. I think Purr is too dangerous. And let's just attack. You might have another giant growth. Yep, you've got another giant growth. So, killed off my rookie, fortunately. Alright, it took it. So, not sure why they didn't block. Maybe they didn't have enough time. But yeah, we got our first win for Gideon against the hot, hot Drizzt. So, unexpected, it took a while to get there, but we managed to overrun them. Okay, so that's it for our introductory unlocking video for Gideon. It's been tough with only won one game out of 10, I think, because firstly, we ran out of cards too quickly, and secondly, the creatures die too quickly and too easily unless you have armor. But even so, a lot of Spell Slingers have just ways to deal with our creatures, and once our creatures are down, then Gideon cannot come onto the battlefield. So I think that's Gideon's biggest weak weakness, and unless uh, Gideon gets some buff in terms of the cards or new cards, then he's not going to be one of the more powerful Spell Slingers. Even with the addition of the Paladin skill class card, which can add abilities for ourselves, it's still not good enough because you really need to curve out very well and even putting all those small creatures is just not enough for Gideon to win. So we're going to experiment some more but if you have any ideas or suggestions of what cards you can put in, I hope you will comment and do subscribe if you want to watch more videos in the future, it will really help the channel a lot. If you want to read more articles on Magic the Gathering, you can also check out our website on tapandsack.com. We've got stuff on Spell Slingers as well as the actual Magic the Gathering game. Alright, so we're tapping out now. Take care, stay safe, and see you guys next time.